Hey, this is Eric with Program with Eric.com, and today we're going to talk about controllers in Ember. Uh, are controllers dead in Ember? Well, we'll talk about it. There was a great podcast by, em uh, by Ember Weekend recently. Uh, it's this one, episode 54, Like Stealing Candy from a Baby, where they talked to Lauren Tan, who did a great talk at EmberConf this year. Her slides are up, by the way, on speaker deck. And it was just talking a lot of different topics, but one of them is about controllers. And I just want to do a, just a quick example talking about controllers and components. And if you're, already, if, you, if you're in the know, you probably know that controllers are eventually going to be eliminated. As you can see here, and this is the RFC for writable components. Writable components now, uh, there is a feature flag that you can use to turn on if you use the latest Canary build of Ember. I'm not going to get into that right now. Maybe that's a good screencast for another time to play around with that using the, the flags. But let's say you're in a current version and you want to still, or what, what do you want to do right now? So obviously controllers aren't dead, but let's just see how controllers work compared to components. So I'm going to go ahead and use Ember Twiddle. By the way, Ember Twiddle is just like JS Fiddle. Um, it's specifically for Ember programs. I would highly recommend it if you go to ember-twiddle.com. I blew it up here so it's so hopefully a little bit easier to see on the screen. So we're going to go to File, and we're going to add a router, and we're going to just add two routes. This dot route. We're going to add test one, and we're going to add test two. Not very creative names, but. And then just to make sure things are working, we're going to add two templates. We're going to call one test1. And we're going to add another template. Test2. And now we'll go ahead and look at our templates. Test1, we'll go test1 route with controller and we'll go test to route with component and then in our application uh, we'll go ahead and create one more file to make this a little easier create an index file index and in here we'll just type it high so we got high here and we'll do a link to non block form. We'll call it uh, controller route. And we'll link it to test one. And then we'll do a link to component route. And we'll put that to test two. And we'll just put these all on our same line. They're all different lines, and then in the application controller, we're going to do block form link to, and we'll just put this back to the application so we can get back to the application quickly. And we'll just close it here. Alright, so now we can go controller route. That's our first route. We go back, component route, test two, route with component. So obviously they both have controllers, but we haven't created anything first. So let's go ahead and real quickly, let's create a controller. And we'll create it for our test one route. And we'll create just a real basic property here. I will call it my, my prop. And we'll put it one in here. And then if we go into the test one, Shows up my prop one, and if we go to controller, one second here, we are my prop. There it is. There's one, and just to make this, let's see, we can make a in, uh, input helper. We'll put value equals my prop, so we can make any changes to it. Now we hit it. So now we have this value prop, and break so now we have this we can put any number in here we want so now let's create a component and we'll 
we'll call it my component, why not? So here's the component file. We'll get rid of the old my component. And let's do the same thing. In the component, we have a component JS file here. We'll put another property on it called my prop. We'll put it to 100. And then inside here, we'll reference the my prop. And we'll use an input helper again. And then we just need to put my component inside our test too. My component. All right, so let's take a look. So we got our controller one here. Back, we have component route. Okay, good. Let's change one thing here. We'll put a break here. So controller route, we have the property gotten from the controller, it's one here. We go to component route, we have 100, the value is 100. So what I want to show you here is if we go into the controller route and we change this number to like 100, and we go out, exit out and we go back in, it stays at 100. Because actually controller is a singleton, so it's going to save the information even if you switch different routes. On the other hand, the component route, controller's out, it's 100. Let's put this at... I don't know, 124. 124, 124. But if you go to the component route, you see if you put the add value here, let's put it 1000, 10,000. If you exit out, go back in, it's back to 100. And so what's happening here is that the component gets, every time you go back into the route, <coughs> the component doesn't save any of the values. So it gets rendered again. Basically it gets restarted or initialized again every time you go back into the route. So you can't actually store any state in here. Now I know I did a video before where I said if you're using objects or arrays that you should really use the init hook to, to put those in there. But I was talking more inside the same route. But if you're actually changing between different routes, that in that case I had one route and I had the component many times in it. And that way I didn't want to share state. But if you have a component and it's in one route, it's not gonna, and you start moving around the application, that information is gonna be lost. So you can see here, it doesn't matter what I put in here, I go back in, it's back to 100. And on the other hand, the controller saved the information I'm in, because it's singleton, it lives, um, depending, it lives with throughout the application, through the life cycle of the application. So you're probably thinking, well, what does this relate to controllers? Well, obviously that's a really important feature of, of the application is to be able to, to hold on to state that state like that as you transition from route to route. You want to have that feature. And of course there's other things like uh, query parameters that only can be used in controllers. And there's also a, a different types of bubbling actions, the way bu actions bubble up. And then there's also the way you send actions. I'm um, using either strings or using closure actions. Uh, I'm not going to get into any of those, I just kind of rattle those off real quickly. But as you can see, this is a, a definite problem. And what Ta uh, Lauren said in her talk in Ember Weekend is that instead of, if you really wanted to get rid of controllers, if you really didn't want to use controllers anymore, you can use a service. And service are singletons as well, they're long lasting. You can inject them into different components or any anything you want really and then you can save state in there so i'll give you an example so we're going to add a service i didn't do a video on a service i should do a, a video on a service we'll call my service and in the my service we're going to have another property this might be confusing i named them all the same but we're going to call this 54321 so this is my prop now i can use this service in all my different components but I have to inject them or I have to use some kind of initializer to inject them throughout the application so the easiest way for this example is I'm going to go back into my component here and I'm going to call it my my service 
We're going to call this my service. We're going to do ember.inject.service. And that should give us access to the my service object. And just, uh, just remember that by convention, since the name of the property is the same name as the service, you don't have to actually specify the name of the service in here, otherwise you have to do something like this, my service. And also, it's also um, camel case by by default, by convention, even though it's dash, dasherized here. So uh, now let's see if we can access the other property. And let's delete, let's do this to make this a little bit more understandable. We'll call it my prop one. And we'll go back to my components. So now we have my service injected into the component. So if we go back to our templates and go back to our component, and go, let's just do my value one here. And this is not going to work. We have to do my service, my service. Because we go back to our component, we call that my service, my service. So let's see if that worked. Okay, great. So we have 54321, 54321, that's the default we set, 54321. So, but now if we change it to let's say 12345, and we go back to the application route, and then we go back to the component route, it actually saves. So because uh, service is a singleton as well, and it can be saved throughout the application. So what I'm getting at is, if you really wanted to get rid of controllers, but you needed to have properties that need to be saved throughout the application and of course actions and everything else you can start using components and then for everything you need to have that's long lasting that you need to have in multiple different places in your application then I would create a service put all your service logic in here and then you'll be able to use both the uh, then you can pretty much get rid of controllers for most things there might be a circumstance you might still need it, even with a service and a component, but for the most part you can get rid of it. And then you can future proof yourself, so then when writable components come along, then you'll be all set. And it will probably take more than just renaming your controller to component. There will be, you're going to have to specify how it's going to return the, the information. But nevertheless, that's a little bit beyond this video here. So if you have any questions, please leave uh, please leave a question in the comments below. Also, double check my Ember.js cookbook. I go deeply into services, into all the basics on Ember.js, and a few advanced topics like authentication and add-ons, how to create your own add-on, a lot of things like that. And the links are all in the description below. Thank you.